What's going on YouTube? Just want to change up the angle here, see how this looks. Anyways guys, we're going to go to part 3 of the IELTS speaking exam. I'm going to talk about the tips as I talked about with the other parts. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. First tip, after you've given your talk, listen carefully as the examiner introduces the first topic area. So you'll probably notice that in part 3, usually the questions and the topics are related to part 2 of the IELTS speaking exam. So make sure you have understood and decide how the examiner is ex expecting you to respond, okay? Begin your answer with a clear statement that directly addresses the question and opens the discussion. You can, for example, use phrases like, well, in my view, there is one main, etc., etc., and then put in your answer there, okay? or I think it depends on, okay? So not only these phrases are a good way to introduce your answers, but effectively they make your answers longer, which, you know, of course you wanna give longer answers, especially in part three, and make sure that your answers are really complete and full. Don't make, I mean, you know, don't make it too long. It's not a speech like part two, but, you know, they can't be one-worded or short answers. Part three is effectively probably the most important part of the speaking IELTS exam, okay? So really, you know, bring it home here. You're probably tired from speaking in part two. Part three is really where you wanna, you know, you see the finish line when you're running the race and you're getting tired. You really wanna speed through that, you know, speed up and give it your 120%. So part three is really like that. Okay, next thing is give as long an answer as you can for each question, as I said before. Uh, good answers have a lot of ideas and details, okay? Uh, part 3 is kind of where they test your depth and uh, knowledge of the question and answer. So how deep you can uh, really talk about certain topics. Uh, can you have a deep discussion or, you know, critical thinking about certain, um, you know, conflicting and difficult topics to talk about. So they're really testing you here and part 3 is difficult. Even for some native speakers, you know, you might even get a topic you really don't know what to say about. So you have to do your best and, you know, say what you know. Yeah, good answers have a lot of details and ideas. Use a variety of expressions to introduce and link your ideas. For example, you can use words like such as while, whereas, because, and so that, etc. The examiner will let you talk as long as you can. Nevertheless, you must always stick to the question. If you start to talk about something different, the examiner will interrupt you, okay? So again, like part two, make sure that it's related to the topic, okay? So if we're talking about, if we're having a deep discussion about, you know, astrophysics, don't start talking about, you know, your grocery list, about what you need to buy on the weekend when you're not working, okay? So <laughs> what you need to buy on the weekend to fill your fridge for the rest of the week or whatever. All right, so anyways, part three also wants to know your opinion. So make sure you give your opinion, your thoughts, what you think on the topic, okay? This is where some people kind of struggle because they're afraid to give their opinions to say what they think, maybe because, you know, to save face or whatever. But this is not the time for that. You really need to say what you think. You need, you need to not be afraid to state your opinion. Again, there is no right or wrong answer when you're saying your opinion. It's not really what your opinion is. You're not gonna lose points if the examiner doesn't agree with your opinion. It's about how you speak. It's not really about the content, you know, if it's right or wrong. So it's really how you speak. How are you able to express what you think? Do you work or study? Uh, I'm work. I have been working in Japanese company for two years now. Wrong. Well, <laughs> wrong answer. What is the right answer? That's the wrong answer. <laughs> Just kidding. So don't be afraid to be, you know, disagreed with. The examiner is not going to tell you if they disagree or agree with your opinion, okay? It's more about how you are speaking about the topic. It is essential that you give clear opinions, okay? Make sure they're absolutely clear and not convoluted. Uh, give reasons and examples to support your views. This will help you make your opinion clear. Examples and reasons. So for example, because 
and then for example or such as. So using this key structure that we use for part one will also come into play and help you uh, give a complete answer in part three. So I'm going to give you this key and we're going to practice this after I'm done giving you all the tips. A few more tips and we're almost done. If you're not sure how to answer a question, use a filler phrase. Okay, I'm gonna continue and finish the video from this angle. I don't really like the other one. Anyways, if you're not sure on how to answer a question, use a filler phrase. So let me give you some ideas or examples of this. Give yourself extra time to think about what to say by using a filler phrase like, well, I guess. That's an interesting question. I haven't thought about that before. So these are filler phrases and they give you kind of some time to kind of like fluff up your answer, you know, make them longer, and then also gives you some time to think without an awkward silence or, you know, giving an impression that, you know, the, to the examiner that you don't know what to say. So these filler phrases are great, really practice these. Obviously native speakers use these all the time. You'll probably hear, especially Americans say like, 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 um, 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 yeah, mm-hmm, like, uh, yeah, like, 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 yeah, yeah, uh-huh, oh, yeah, that's interesting, ooh, well, let me tell ya, okay, so these are all examples of fillers. You can also get extra time by using the examiner's question into your own words. Again, like much like part one, you can repeat it back to the examiner. For example, are you asking me to talk about what I think school would have been like for people when my parents were children? As a question, and they could say yes or no. And this also clarifies what exactly they're asking you. This also fills your answer too. Do not ask the examiner for your band score at the end of the speaking test. Now, I know this is obvious for some, but for some of you who are new to taking an IELTS exam, this is something that you want to avoid. So don't ask them for your band score at the end of the speaking test. Please avoid that. Examiners are not allowed to discuss band scores with their candidates. You will find out when they give you, when they're done grading your overall test. And of course, they will let you know. Okay. Anyways guys, I hope these tips help you. If you found these tips useful, please give this video a like. Comment on maybe some tips I've left out or what do you think about these tips? Let us know in the comment section below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Click the notification bell to see more videos like this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Oh, one last thing. Let's go ahead and practice using some of these tips. So for part three, I want to use this key that I also use in part one. But one thing you want to make sure here in part three is with the key, notice the sentence length or the amount of sentences. So in part one, two to three sentences is all right. In part three, at least, you know, make them, you know, they're gauging your depth on the topic of the conversation, how much you can go into detail, how much you can talk about this topic you know, aim for three or more sentences. So that's a really big difference with part one and three. Three is really where it's gonna go affect your score and you really wanna bring your best effort into this. So we're gonna practice using this key and I'll have a list of questions ready for you guys to practice. So let's go ahead and practice those. I'll catch you guys in the next one, you know. There's all kinds like Man, let me tell you, man. Well, that's an interesting point you got there. Oh, I didn't think about that before, but now that you brought it up, that's an interesting point. And let me go ahead and answer that. Okay, so this is all examples of fluff.